Okay, I've asked Sister Leslie to come up and read to start my sermon off. Um, tonight, today we're going to talk about uh, pursuing peace. How many know that uh, the Bible tells us to follow after peace? Don't get caught up in the agitation and the, and the friction of this world, but to, to seek peace. Now, when he, when he talks about seeking peace, he, it doesn't mean sit down and do nothing. Right? Some people, you've got to stay in the middle of the road. Some people get over the road on this side, you know, or get over here. You know, just stay down the middle of the road. You are believers first. And there is a big, big harvest field out there that we must maintain a heart of love and, and even pity. Pity for them. And, and seek the lost. Amen? And as we do, God will take care of all these other things that are going on in this world. And so, Leslie's going to read a beautiful scripture on, on that. Good morning. And I was just uh, sitting there thinking as he was speaking over all the different ways of giving and serving and just loving. You know, what, what took place here this morning? What an act of love. I mean, God's presence is just so strong this morning. I mean, it's just got me, it's moved me. And I just want to thank him. So um, this is just, it, as he says, it's just a beautiful scripture. So I hope you enjoy it. It's called Love One Another. It's out of the Passion Translation, Colossians 3, verse 12, starting with verse 12. You are always and dearly loved by God, so robe yourself with the virtues of God, since you have been divinely chosen to be holy. Be merciful as you endeavor to understand others, and be compassionate, showing kindness towards all. <coughs> Be gentle and humble, unoffendable in your presence with others. Tolerate the weakness of those in the family of faith, forgiving one another in the same way you have been graciously forgiven by Jesus Christ. If you find fault with someone, release this same gift of forgiveness to them. For love is supreme and must flow through each of these virtues. Love becomes the mark of true maturity. Let your heart be always guided by the peace of the anointed one who called you to peace as part of his one body. Always be thankful. Let the word of Christ live in you richly, flooding you with all wisdom. Apply the scriptures as you teach and instruct one another with the psalms and with festive praises and with prophetic songs given to you spontaneously by the Spirit to sing to God with all of your hearts. Let every activity of your lives and every word that comes from your lips be drenched with the beauty of our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One. Bring your constant praise to God, the Father, because of what Christ has done for you. Let every wife be supportive and tenderly devoted to her husband. For this is beautiful, a beautiful illustration of the devotion to Christ. Let every husband be filled with cherishing love for his wife and never be insensitive towards her. Let the children respect and pay attention to their parents in everything, for this pleases our Lord Jesus. My eyes are watering a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and fathers, don't have unrealistic expectations for your children, or else they may become discouraged. Let every employee listen well and follow the instructions of their employer not just when their employers are watching, and not in pretense, but faithful in all things. For we are to live our lives with pure hearts in the constant awe and wonder of our Lord God. Put your heart and soul into every activity you do as though you are doing it for the Lord himself and not merely for others. For we know that we will receive a reward and inheritance from the Lord, 
as we serve the Lord Yahweh, the Anointed One. A disciple will be repaid for what he has learned and followed, for God pays no attention to the titles or prestige of men. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Let's pray over the word. Father, I thank you that this word will find a home in each and every heart. I thank you, Lord God, that we're here to learn, we're here to listen, and we're here to just grow in Christ. I thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Hebrews 12, uh, verse 14, and we're going to talk about pursuing peace. King James Version says, follow peace. Um, you've got to be careful. If, if you're not careful, you can get out there on pathways that are not very peaceful. When I talk about peace, I'm talking about staying in the love of God. See, the love of God doesn't say, I love you because you love me back. The love of God says, I, I, I just love you. We love because God loves us. Amen? We love because God has given us many opportunities to make it right. And, and like I said, you know, I feel in my heart, this was on my heart uh, last night. The Lord woke me up to, um, to put it on Facebook there. But t now is the perfect time to start following God. Amen. It's always the perfect time, but now is the perfect time. God specializes in new beginnings. Amen? And so, but you have to make that decision. You have to decide, do you have enough faith in, in, um, in the living God? Can you shut out the noise of the world that tells you, well, the, the world's way is the right way? Well, I asked you, what has the world's way done for you lately? <laughs> Have you ever met anybody that, say, that said, boy, my life was going good, and then I met Jesus, and then it all went downhill? <laughs> <laughs> it's the other way around, right? You know, so, um, but the world is tricky. And, and it's very, see, the world appeals to the flesh, and, 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 it, and it tries to gratify the flesh, and then it gets people caught up in because they, 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 they try to stand for certain things because people are generally good people, but, but they don't uh, follow the, the spirit of the Lord, and so they get caught up in these um, traps, and, and um, they don't even know it sometimes. Jesus said there was coming a time where people would persecute the church and think that they're doing him God a favor. I believe we're in that time right now. So look at Hebrews 12, verse 14. It says, pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord, looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. And so what he's saying is we are to continue, continue to pursue peace with who? Everyone. If, you, if you, are, you are at work and there are people with a different political persuasion than you, don't get over into um, anger and, and frustration. Love them. Amen? Yes. If you are a born again spirit of, a child of God and you have the Holy Spirit in you and you follow the word and you listen to the words of, of the leaders that God puts in your life, you're you're on the right track. But remember, remember the words of the song Amazing Grace. I was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. You gotta have pity and compassion on those people because they are still lost and they're still blind. And Jesus said the blind lead the blind and they all fall into the ditch. And so we are to be a peace-loving uh, people that, that always considers um, our witness. What do people see when they see us? What do people think about this church? I pray and I believe that they do see the love of God in here, right? So what he's saying is separate yourself unto the Lord and stay in his grace. Stay in the love and the peace and the unity of God. Because there is a root of bitterness. You don't want the root of bitterness. It's a resentment that sprouts up within people and it causes trouble and it poisons the hearts of many. 
we're living in that time right now, are we not? You know, we live in a time of right now, uh, like a, a political unrest and social unrest and a lot of different things going on out there. There's just this, you know, Jesus said in the last days, kingdom will rise against kingdom. And if you translate that out, it's one political um, fraction against another, right? It's just basically what it means. There'll be a lot of politics going on. And, and uh, um, I'm not telling you to, to stay out of politics. You gotta pray and you gotta believe and you gotta thank God for turning this nation around or whatever you gotta pray for in that way. But you do need to stay out of the, the bitterness. And some people, they're so, the, the politics are their religion, Christian and non Christian. You know, I remember uh, when, I, when I first came here, I went to a, well, when I first became a pastor, somebody invited me to a political event. And I was like a little lamb thrown to the wolves. <laughs> I had no idea. I was so naive. I never got involved in that stuff. I voted, but, and we're having a nice dinner. And, and, and um, there's this really nice couple sitting across the table. I mean, the woman was so sweet all night long. She's like maybe in her mid-20s, her husband. They're just so nice and so sweet. And I said one thing that went against their political views. And honestly, I saw the fangs come out. <laughs> and the eyes. And boy, did they ever jump down my throat. I'm like, sorry, I just made a statement. That's what you want to stay out of. If you are truly found, and if you truly see, you gotta take them by the hand and lead them out of the darkness. We gotta rescue as many people as we can. You have to have pity on these people because their minds have been bombarded, I'm talking bombarded by a spiritual, strong spirit of deception. They're getting it in the classrooms. They're getting it on the TVs. They're getting it everywhere. They're boom, 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 boom. And it's hitting their minds. And now they're in a fog. You, you got to have pity on them. You know, when Jesus walked this earth, it was a time of political unrest. Jesus, he, in his, his whole life, they were, the Jews were always, Israel was always under the Roman rule. Remember when Jesus was born, Herod um, tried to kill all the firstborn, or he did, trying to get at Jesus. Jesus and his own family were exiled, had to run to Egypt. He knew something about political unrest, but he knew that he came to do the Father's business. We came to do the Father's business. I am not a politician. Amen? I'm a child of God that speaks the truth in love to the best of my ability. You know, the Jewish uh, religious leaders, they sought to crucify Jesus, but they couldn't crucify him under their law. So what they did is they, they went to the um, Roman law. They, they used the Roman political system of their day to crucify Jesus. They took him to, uh, the, the Jewish leaders took him to um, Pilate, and they, they lied about Jesus. They said that he was an insurrectionist, which he wasn't. They said that he was trying to overthrow Caesar because that'll get you crucified. That will. They, don't, they didn't crucify common things. But when they said that, they were out to kill Jesus. And they used the political system and got the people all up in a frenzy and got them all out of their minds. And they literally chose Barabbas. Remember that? Pilate said you can choose Barabbas or you can choose Jesus. They chose Barabbas. Barabbas was, a, uh, was an infamous insurrectionist. He was, he was definitely trying to overthrow the Roman government, and he actually murdered people in the process, and now he's up there, and the people, because they weren't spiritually um, minded, they saw Barabbas as the answer. Live by the sword, die by the sword. The answer was Jesus Christ, the spiritual deliverance, right? It's always spiritual first, but they chose Barabbas. But the Jewish leaders put pressure on, on, on uh, Pilate and, and the Roman leadership, and they, they said this, they made this statement. Here's what the Jews said to um, Pilate. If you do not crucify him, you are no friend of Caesar. You know what they were threatening? A riot. 
And Pilate gave in to that. He knew Jesus was innocent. His wife said, don't have anything to do with that man. I've had a dream about him. So basically what the Jewish leaders said, if you don't give us justice, there'll be no peace. Political unrest. Here is an innocent man, Jesus. What was Jesus guilty of to the people? Opening blind eyes? Making the lame walk? Healing the leper? Causing the dead to come back to life? I mean, for which of these things were they wanting to crucify him? Do you know, realize what they did with Jesus? They ridiculed him. And I'm just saying this for you, there's a parallel, right? Jesus lived in uneasy political peril times. Well, we do too. If you follow certain people, if you get your head so far into all this political stuff and you listen to all these people on their podcasts and things like that, you have to be careful you don't get way over there and get off the program. The program is winning souls. You might, well, don't get a vigilante attitude. They come to my house, I'm going to knock them in the head. <laughs> now, if they come to your house, why don't you tell them about Jesus? Amen? God knows what's going on. But they ridiculed Jesus. Pilate had Jesus flogged and whipped. Roman soldiers put a crown of thorns on his head, dressed him in a purple robe, blindfolded him, struck him in the face, saying, prophesy, tell us which one hit you. They ridiculed him. He said, here he is, the king of the Jews. And and they completely um, just disrespected him. If you are a Christian today and you have good Christian godly values, be prepared to be disrespected. But pursue peace. You don't have to go to every argument that you're invited to attend. You can say, thank you very much. I think I'll skip this one. You can say, we can agree to disagree. Right? Because there's traps out there and there's division traps and there's there's all kinds of um, bitterness traps. And you're not going to win if you enter in there in that way. The Bible says it's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. Do you hear what I'm saying? Jesus was was, was in the same situation. Most of his disciples came out of a hard, hard... um, insurrectionist type mentality that Judas was, was the number one guy. What happened to Judas? If you do a study on Judas before Jesus, Judas became a disciple, he wanted to overthrow the Roman government. He was part of a group like that. And, uh, but when he met Jesus, he had his opportunity to come into the family of God and to be one with Jesus. But what did he do when, at the Last Supper when Jesus was taking communion with the disciples? What did he do? He betrayed Jesus. His mind was so full of insurrection. His mind was so full of other things that the Spirit of God couldn't penetrate him how it needed to be. You can can do this study out. Judas betrayed Jesus because he thought that it would force the hand of Jesus to overthrow the Roman government. These people were all natural-minded like that. That's why they chose Barabbas. The people chose Barabbas over Jesus because they they saw him as a hero because at least he tried. You're not going to overcome what's happening in this world by by mere natural might. You're going to overcome these political um, deviants by the Spirit of God. But keep it down the middle of the road. That doesn't mean you say, well, I'm going to sit home. I'm not going to vote then. No, you better vote. Your vote is your seed. Amen. Amen. All I'm saying is do the the work and and get involved. This is a great country. You have just as much right to vote and to be a part of what you believe in as anyone else does. Don't let anybody shame you into what you believe. But don't get the bitterness in you. Don't get that overwhelming desire to to, um, knock someone in the head.
Is it that bad out there today? I would think so. I've had some women tell me, you know, pray for my husband. He watches TV and he watches the news and he yells at the news all day long. <laughs> so if that's you, stop doing that. <laughs> On top of the remote, there's a little button. You can hit that button and turn the TV off. Amen. I know it's hard to... to to see what you believe in and what your country means so much to you and to see these things. But you know what? Don't get caught up in all that. They are blind. They're lost. You gotta reach down and help them. You say, well, what if they bite my hand? Give them your other hand. Well, what if they bite that hand? Give them your foot. <laughs> Don't kick them in the head. I mean, give them your foot. <laughs> <laughs> I, want to, I want to tell you something. I didn't know which way the Lord was going to hand me go, but I've seen political people on both sides of the spectrum. I've seen those that are more conservative to believe like sort of like where, where most of us, a lot of us believe, and I've seen some that are clearing over on the other side. And, 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 and you know what? I've seen both people, and both of them are just as wiry-eyed as, as the other. And they're coming up with these things. And then these, these, oh my goodness. Your life would be a lot easier if you just go out and win someone. Jesus walked through the middle of Roman rule and built the church. And you know what he said as he was dying on the cross? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Don't get caught up. Don't let that bitterness get into you. Do you see what I'm saying? When you're at church, it's not a good time to discuss politics. Let's discuss Jesus. Amen. And when you're at church, it's not a good time to talk about vaccine or non-vaccinated. Just, just love people. Let's make it be about God. Amen. You're entitled to your own opinions, but other people might not agree with you in certain areas. It's their right to agree. To, to, to disagree. It's your right to believe how you believe. When you come into church, you should have a sparkle in your eye. You should smile so much that your face hurts when you go home. You could say, you know what? I love everybody in there because they're my brother, they're my sister. I take a lot of heat. I'm, I got to be out front and center. I got to speak on certain issues because there are people that need it. There are people that, that they're, they're hurting and, and they're confused because all they're hearing is all this bombardment. And sometimes you need a man of God or a woman of God to stand up and say, look, here's what God says. And I'll take the heat for saying it because I'm never turning my back on God. What happens out there will not change what we teach in here. And I'll, I'll go out there and I'll go in the forefront, and, but you got to get your Bibles and you got to read too. But you got to stay out of the bitterness and the resentment or else you're going to be caught up in all the mess. And then you're going to be in fear. Right? We don't have to be afraid of anything. Jesus is our Lord. So Jesus lost in the court of public opinion, did he not? The, the Pharisees and the Sadducees got the people all in a, in a frenzy and um, got in their head. There's, there, the great, right now, Christianity in the United States of America is losing in the court of public opinion because there are some people out there that they, they are being trained to persecute the church. And they don't even know it. If you persecute this, you're persecuting the church because this is what we believe. This is what we live by. This is, what, this is what the country was built on. And so the agitators, you know like the, the setting in the wash machine where you agitate? Anybody have? Like, 
You turn on the news, you're going to be agitated. <laughs> or, or Jesus said it like this to Peter. He said, Satan has desire to sift you as wheat. How do you think the devil is going to try to get into your head and your mind? Do you think he's going to show up at your house with horns and a pitchfork and smoke coming out of his nose? <laughs> I'm the devil. Thoughts, ideas, and suggestions, deception. He's going to try to get into your mind and get into your heart. If you don't guard your heart, he's going to make you bitter. Bitter. There's some people that are bitter with me because I speak what the Word of God says. And the Lord says, okay, that's okay, because you're not standing before them when it's all said and done. You're standing before me. I couldn't live with myself if I didn't tell you the truth. And you know what the truth is? And these people that are bitter against me, I'm not bitter against them, but how many of them have ever come and said, let's look at the Bible, let's see what the Bible really says? How many of them? Zero. I see him out at Walmart sometimes. Like, they duck in another aisle. <laughs> you know what? I refuse to be offended. I refuse to get bitter. It comes with the territory. They crucified Jesus because he said he was the son of God. They crucified him. We are his body. The same spirit that got into those people is the same spirit that's out there today. This message for you to, today is about you staying above the fray. I'm not saying leave the country to whoever would run it. I pray for the country as much as anybody. Right? And I pray that we all pray and, and just follow God's path for our life because there's the natural and the supernatural, right? You have to do natural things and you have to organize the structure. I'm not talking about that. Just don't get hateful. So I had written this down in my sermon. We need to be a people of love and faith faith to reach the harvest of lost souls. Take it easy on them. Have pity on them. They've had their minds hammered by people under satanic influence who know how to push every button. Amen? Look at Acts chapter 1, verse 6. I want to go over here because I want to show you, and I'm trying to build a, a case with you, that Jesus built his ministry in the time of political unrest. And the disciples struggled with that balance the whole way through. Even until Jesus got caught up into the heavens, the disciples were still looking for a natural, physical way to overthrow those evil Romans. They were, they were, they were still thinking that it was going to be a natural type way. I want to tell you something about our country. If we don't get God's house help, we're sunk. We are sunk to the bottom of the ocean. So you might as well start praying and believing and thanking him for the miracle. In my opinion. So look at this. In Acts chapter 1, Jesus died on the cross. He rose from the dead. He's given last minute instructions to the disciples that he's going to be taken out of here. He's going to go up to the right hand of the Father. And, and, and look at this. He's had these disciples for three and a half years. Many people miss this. Look at this. Acts chapter 1 verse 6. And they therefore were come together and they asked him saying, Lord... Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? You thought they were watching bad news. I'm going to try to be good. I'm not going to name no news stations. I mean, 
Jesus just told them, go to Jerusalem, wait, you're gonna get the promise of the Spirit, you're gonna have the power of God, and they're like, are you gonna restore Israel, man? Are you gonna kick some Roman butt? Are you gonna deliver us by might? Jesus said, live by the sword, die by the sword. This is a spiritual battle we're facing. Do you think, you Republicans in here, do you think that the Democrats are the only ones? Are you kidding me? There are tremendous amounts of Republicans. They need to be replaced. Yes. Let's ask God for godly leaders. Yes. It takes two parties in a country. Two parties is for a healthy country. Yeah, if you, th if you think, well, uh, all oh, those Republicans, they're all saints. Oh, come on. Uh, they came into the office, offices poor and leave millionaires too. Uh-oh. I'm a big believer in term limits. Makes too much sense though. <laughs> uh, let's keep this, people out of, this, this person out of office for 30 years so they don't build up these unrighteous, unbeneficial alliances with other countries. I mean, I'm just a humble man, but I think it's a good idea. Why not get them in and get them out? Don't, don't give them time to, to stuff to go to their head. So they asked this question, and you know, our, our loving Savior is so kind and so patient. If it had been me, I might have said, you knuckleheads. <laughs> what are you still talking about that for? Didn't you see what happened to Judas? Judas, Judas got so remorseful when he saw that Jesus was not going to do what he thought he was going to do, and he hung himself. 30 pieces of silver. But Jesus was kind. He's more kind and patient than most of us. Look what he said in verse 7. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his power. So he's saying, okay, that political stuff and that restoring of Israel, it, it, it's in the Father's hand right now. I'm talking to you about building my church. That's a kingdom too. The president is not my God. I have a God. We have a president of the country. And we have leaders in the country, but they're not our God. But look at verse 8. He clicks it back over into the spiritual realm. He says, but you shall receive power. That's the Greek word dunamis. Supernatural power will be in your lives. If you don't have a root of bitterness, and if you're trying to win the loss instead of trying to, to um, knock the loss in the head, or win an argument with them, right? He said, you will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. That's what it's always been about taking the power of God and being a witness. I can win a Democrat to the Lord and I can win a Republican to the Lord. I can win an Independent to the Lord if they're open the, because the power of God, the dunamis, is on me and you. And when you speak the truth in love and you, you can say, you know what, let's put all that political stuff aside. I want to talk to you about, about your soul. I want to ask you where you are with Jesus Christ. You know what you'll probably be? You'll probably be some grandmother, some grandmother's answer to her prayer, who's prayed for the, these, her family, and she's done left the earth now, but her prayers are still here. You could, you could answer that call. There's all kinds of prayers out there. These wonderful men and women of God that have gone on, they still have loved ones here.
He said, I want you to have the power to be a witness. Look at this. Unto the uttermost part of the earth. Look at verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they, they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come also in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Yeah, that's right. Jesus is coming back. Amen. Right? He's coming back. Which banner are you going to carry when he comes back? The truth and righteousness? A soul winner? I want to close with this. The Bible mentions two sisters, Mary and Martha. Martha um, got on Jesus because he did, he, she wanted him to tell Mary to help her serve. Anybody remember that, that account? And, uh, and uh, Jesus said this to Martha. He said, Martha, Martha, you are troubled about many things. But Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken from her. If you look at the word troubled, it's the Greek word tribrazo. What he was saying is, it's not just this in instance, this incident here that makes you troubled, Martha. You are a troubled soul. You're agitated. You're, you're irritable. You're, you're, you have unrest always. And he said there's one answer to that. Mary chose it. Mary was at the feet of Jesus. Soaking up the word. Amen? So is that still the answer today? So be at the feet of Jesus. Pray for your country. Pray, pray for those leaders. Ask the Lord where you can get involved. But you are Christians first. Are you not? I remember when that stuff happened down in January 6th where people went into the Capitol and all that stuff. and I don't know what they were thinking. But I was watching that. On, on, um, some people were live streaming it, that whole event down in D.C. where the president spoke. You know what you saw mostly? Because there's people walking through the crowds. You know what you saw? Christians there singing songs. Honestly, you can Google it. They were singing songs. These, 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 these little church ladies. And then they had this group of, 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 of Chinese, I think they were from, from uh, California. They came the whole way out and they were preaching the word and people were getting up and talking about Jesus. And, but then there was also other sorts of people there too. It was the weirdest thing. I, could, I, I, I didn't know all that stuff was gonna happen, but I could see, oh, there's two types of people with the same, like, they, they want the same thing, but some want to live by the sword, and others want to do it by the Spirit. Do everything you can do to walk in love and, and to be a peaceful people, and God will do the rest. Amen? That's all I have. Would you rise, please? See, I told you I wasn't going to preach long. I wasn't there long. Okay, the uh, prayer ministers are coming up. If you need prayer, come on up. They'll be here. Um, while they're making this long walk, <laughs> Jesus said, never repay evil for evil. You got to watch what comes out of your mouth, even in the privacy of your own home. Uh-oh. I remember uh, Brother Craig and I, would, would, he likes the Yankees. I like the Baltimore Orioles. <laughs> and we'd get to talking about our teams and my poor Orioles. 
Yeah, Brother Terry's here with me. Valerie's there, right? <laughs> How many other people are with me at the Orioles? All right, okay. I, I was, I'd get so upset at them. And I'd be saying things like, like mean things. That's crazy. He's my witness. <laughs> and you know what the Lord said? You better watch that. You better watch your heart. On a dumb sports team. And I've tried since then. I ain't saying nothing about them. Let them be them. <laughs> but I was, you got to watch your words. Right? You can pray. And you can seek God. Adversity is where the church grows the best. Yes. They burnt the early Christians at the stake. And they would hear them singing in the fire. And then, uh, then 300, 400 more would pop up. This is with Josephus. This is Jewish historians. This is what people tell you. They burned those Christians at the stake and they're singing in the fire. And then here comes another 200, 300 Christians. This is our time to thrive. Yes. Let them persecute the church. They're pouring gasoline on a Holy Ghost fire. Amen. You got to decide whose side you're on now. Yes. You, are you su- serving God or are you serving, serving mammon? Mammon. I'll serve God. Amen. Because I know one thing. Jesus Christ is coming back. Amen. And don't buy any ripe bananas. <laughs> So if, if you need prayer, come on up here, okay? And uh, um, tonight we'll be back at it again. I'm not sure, maybe it's along this line, but, um, uh, but let, let's pray. Father, we come to the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for these precious souls that, that they came this morning, Lord. They made a conscious decision to come. No one made them come, Lord. They just felt it in their heart that they needed to be here. And you said, Lord, as we press into you, that we'll reap uh, of you. You said, Lord, if we sow to the Spirit, we'll reap of the Spirit. So I thank you, Lord, for this word that was implanted in them. I thank you, Lord, that there's a regard over their heart that Satan will not steal the word out of their heart, that it'll stay there and they'll water it and they'll grow in this knowledge. And Lord, may we, Freedom in Christ Church, may we be a a church for all people. No matter what they're believing or what they're going through, may we be a church of love and a church of all people, Lord. May we always be open, too, to hear other people's points of view and not be um, hard-hearted about anything, Lord. But ultimately, we'll never compromise on Jesus Christ or the Word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.